beaten Purdue at home in five years and hasn't lost a Big Ten game in five weeks. 11 straight W's in its late season bid for a number one seed come March. To East Lansing we go, where this apparently was the goal. And Jason Klein got the message. Late in the first half, he caught fire. Off the screen for three. Spartans by 12 at the half. Second half, different half, same story. Antonio Smith to Klein for the lay-in. Now Klein, he's getting a little assertive here. Why not? He's on fire. Calls for the ball, open three. He's now got 11 straight Michigan State points. Mateen Cleaves drives. He's the senior, he knows to get it to Klein, why not? 14 in a row for the Spartans by Klein. He had 22 in all, Spartans by 21. Purdue efforting a comeback, but Tony Mayfield called for a charge on Mateen Cleaves. Mateen is pumped. Gene Cady always good for a reaction shot is not. Oh boy, on the next trip down the floor, Cleves showing a little offense. The dribble, the pull up, eight points, 11 assists for Cleves. Michigan State cruises 82-69, but the talk afterwards was of Klein, about whom Gene Cady said, he's learned how to play. He's a warrior now. It's good to see kids do that. Michigan State has now won a school record 12 straight Big Ten contests and can clinch a piece of the regular season championship by beating the hated Wolverines on this very network Thursday night at 7.30 Eastern. Number two, UConn hosting Rutgers. Rough get-go for Jake Vosker, who falls on his tailbone on the opening tip. He would be fine, but what about that sore foot? More on that later. Khalid El Amin missed part of Tuesday's shoot-around, missed his first starting spot, first time this season, but he did come up right here, taking the three-on-one pass to the hole. UConn up 27-22. Late in the first half, Jake, Jack Billett drives, but Voskel says no. Nah. Second half, Moore and Kevin Freeman work in the give-and-go. Freeman finishes with a high percentage rip. UConn up 11, but a moment of trepidation for the Huskies as Voskel left the game with a sore left foot. Voskel missed much of the second half. Late second half, UConn up 8. Kevin Freeman, the rebound, the hoop, and the foul. Freeman, 16 points, 9 rebounds, and no, oh, that... Quality stores family entertainment. I've never seen a mascot breakdance. It's the game. first time that UConn has cracked the 70 point and 42% shooting barrier in five games. They shot 50 Villanova. 16 lofty numbers for Miami. And speaking of lofting, Tim James, the swat on Brian Lynch from behind. Johnny Helmsley stops and pops the other end. Miami by eight. Still in the first. In transition, Paulo Coelho from Portugal. The pretty lob to James for the alley oop. 22 points for James. He's only the seventh player in Big East history to score 1,000 points and grab 500 rebounds now. Second half, more Miami, more from Hemsley. He led all scores with 26. Steve Lapis, oh, he's blowing on his fingers as there's Hemsley. Smelling your fingers. Steve, well, that's what Steve Lapis is doing is your TV thing. First half, Brandon Dean. I said, ah, I'll let him, brother. One of 19 Gator turnovers, but Dean's only basket. It was loud. Razorback still building houses on the outside bricks. Pat Bradley, uh-uh, with the three, going the other way. Kenyon Weeks finds Greg Stolt. Stolt getting his three on. Four to five of 11 from threes in the first half. Arkansas just one of 14. Second half, more of the same. Hogs, TJ Cleveland, uh-uh. Florida going the other way. Eddie Shannon will find a wide open Brent Wright. If you ain't Gator, you Gator bite. 11th time this year that Florida's hit at least 10 threes in a game. They went at 74-61. Gators went three stupid. 12 of 23 from the land of three. They only made eight baskets that were two-pointers. The Hogs could only dream of three-point flavor like that. They shot just five of 27, including a pair of three air balls and one shot that glanced off the side of the backboard. Houston at Louisville, the Glides watching his team having trouble hanging on to the ball. First half, Louisville's Tony Williams picks off G. Gervin's pass. Tony taking it to the house. Louisville off to a 17-2 start. Later in the first, Williams pokes it away from Roy Spears. Gets it back. Hell of a kid. Williams, four of Louisville's 17 steals. Cardinals, 60-28 to at the break. Second half, cards goes to Nick Johnson. Deflection, Alex Sanders bringing all kinds of pain. Sanders, 26 points, 12 boards, and a fat Sports Center highlight. Louisville rocks Houston asleep. One of Maryland, it's embarrassing how we lost. The way that they were laughing and joking, being at Carolina, that is not something we are used to. Carolina hosting state, Jason Capel, first starts since returning from about with Mono. Capel, stop, drop, shut him down, open up shop. Nine points for Capel in the first half. State hung tough, five seconds left in the first half. Justin Ganey to Keith Bean, half the end to lay up, reverse the four, or for the reverse layup to end the half. Midway through the second, 
capable. Three-pointer doing work. He had 15 and a foul away from the ball in NC State. Check it out. Ron Kelly called for the foul and Chris Lang. A five-point play. UNC with the one-point lead. Under, under a minute left. Freshman Capel. No. Freshman Lang. Bring it. Hardwood. Your arms are too short to box with Chris. 15 points for Lang. Heels on an 11-0 run. They win it 62-53. It's been tough for Carolina, but they still notch their 29th consecutive 20-win season. Said Ed Cota of all the naysayers who figured Carolina losing guys to the NBA would fall apart. He said, we proved a lot of people wrong. Number one, Duke at Florida State. Elton Brand smacked inside by Ron Hale. Chris Carrowell blocked by Damis Anderson. Saved from out of bounds to Brand. He says, yo, I'm not 6'8", 250 for nothing. He had a double-double, 14 points, 10 boards by halftime. Second half, Morgan watch his feet, keeps him moving, goes up and gets his 15th rebound of the game. It's your world, Elton. The rest of us just watch you score 23 points and 16 total boards. And then Corey Maggetti, uh-oh, maggetti -o. Maggetti had 10, come on, Shane, don't laugh. Maggetti had 10 points. Duke rolls 85-59. They're 25. On him. Jay Hurd misses the three, but Brian Smith had his back. 14 points, seven boards for Smith. Later in the half, Smith, three, silk. Smith goes over 1,000 points for his career. Auburn up 19. More Auburn. Scotty Pullman misses a three. Chris Porter rocking an absolutely fat, wicked game. 19 points, 11 boards for Porter. Auburn wins it 81-63. The Tigers, at least number six, Cincinnati, knows why they are on a three-game skid. The last five minutes of those three games, they've been outscored by an average 14-6. to Kenyon Martin, who won Conference USA Coach Calls, the best player in the league, has these average numbers in those three games. 22 and 4.7. Not points and rebounds, but minutes and fouls. Cincinnati hosted UNC Charlotte. Last time they played, 49ers Diego Guevara blowing kisses to his wife in the crowd. They didn't know it was his wife. Payback is a mug, huh? First half, Melvin Levitt, top of the food chain. A 17-2 Cincinnati run, one good smooch deserves another. Things got rowdy. Gabe Barra knocked in the head by a coin. The officials say, Bob Huggins, do something. Listen, in spite of other people on this slate not having any class, we have class here. If anybody throws something on the floor, you people behind them, get them or throw them out. Huggins' speech similar to the one given by Bengals coach Sam Weich during a game in Cincinnati 10 years ago. Will the next person that sees anybody throw anything onto this field, point them out, or get them out of here. You don't live in Cleveland, you live in Cincinnati. How about Sam Weich making sports in the back of the game? Steve Logan. Oh, Bobby, I did not know you could do it like that. Beating the team that ended their season opening 15 to nothing run. Cincinnati gained some revenge, winning at 82 to 69. They ended three game skid that matched the longest in Bob Huggins' 10 year tenure. Said Pete Michael of the defense and a Huggins technical foul. That's the Bearcats of the past. Crosstown Southern Cal Flavor. USC at number 15, UCLA, second half tie game. Freshman point guard Brandon Glanville, backdoor alley to Jeff Trepagne. Get at me, dog. Glanville needed some help. He was 0 for 10 shooting. UCLA all over the glass, which also means they were building houses with their bricks. Earl Watson's, Watson's three was no good. He got it back. Travis Reed, uh-uh. Travis Reed, uh-uh. Jerron Rush, uh-uh. Earl Watson finally fouled. 17 offensive rebounds for UCLA. I think they got like 16 of them on that one sequence. Under a minute left, Barron Davis getting his freak, his vibe, his groove, his Mac getting it all on. 17 points, Barron said. Ohio State had already swept the Boilermakers and had beaten Indiana by 17 five weeks back in Ohio State, but foul trouble kept Indiana's Luke record at just two points that night. Said Buckeyes coach Jim O'Brien of Wednesday's rematch, if Wrecker scores just two points this time, I think we'll do very well again. To Assembly Hall we go, where the General's team fell down by as many as two touchdowns, but they came back in the second half. Larry Richardson, nice move. Hoosiers up four with 3.30 to play. Buckeyes next possession. Scooney Penn for three. Ohio State down one. They'd be up one on free throws. 35 seconds left. A chance for Indiana to take the lead. A.J. Guyton's leaner. You can't really say it's in the paint because there is no paint there. 
It's kind of in the hardwood. All right, so it's in the lacquer. Anyway, it's no good. Right. He missed it. So trailing by two, who's his last chance? They're going for three, obviously, and Ohio State, great perimeter defense. Michael Lewis forced to chuck it up. It's no good. You see Bobby Knight wanting a foul, but we show it to you again. The contact seems to be caused by Lewis. Ohio State wins 69-67, so the Buckeyes sweep the state of Indiana, and in doing so, win only their third game in Assembly Hall ever. In his last two games, Scooney Penn has scored 47 points, 42 of them coming in the second halves. The second half is where I feel I can step my game up a little bit, said Penn, who scored Ohio State's final eight points. Minnesota at Penn State. Late in the second half, Minnesota down two. Quincy Lewis baseline jumper. We're tied at 55. Let's go a little later in the game. Penn State down one. Dan Earl falling away. Putting the Nittany Lions up 59-58. Under two minutes remaining in the second half. Mitch Onstott lobs the ball to Lewis. The banker Gophers with their largest lead of the game, and it's only three points, 64-61. 30 seconds left, one point go for lead. Lewis drops in the three-pointer, his only three-point attempt of the night. And Minnesota wins 69-63, a huge win for the Gophers. Shorty also needs four block shots to big up and be the first Longhorn with 200 steals and 100 blocks. Number 25, Texas hosting Texas Tech is just window dressing. First half, Texas Tech's Mario Lane drives it and just posterizes Clack. Why you want to hurt him, Mario? Well, he didn't really because it was Mario's only bucket of the game. Later in the half, Red Raiders double team Gabe Manicki finds Chris Mim for the rump shaker. Mim at 20, Texas up five at recess. Second half, they pull away. Clack with the strip. Clack, I, me, I, me, and I'm not a player. I just crush a lot. He had 14. Texas wins it six. Halftime of the Cox game with Kentucky, and it wasn't because he was yelling, but because Wildcat coach Tubby Smith in the adjoining locker room was blistering his team at such high decibels, South Carolina heard it. Said Tubby's son, Kentucky guard Saul, it was loud, but it worked. UK went on a 22-3 run Wednesday. Tubby trying to lead Kentucky to a win over Georgia. 3-0 against Georgia. Georgia's Jermaine Jones, SEC leading scorer, missed him a lot of the game with the hip pointer. Kentucky sniffing the technique on the offensive Evans boards. Michael three. Bradley, four of his rebounds were offensive. Scott Padgett nine. representing two of his eight boards were offensive. Ron Jersey's Bulldogs out-rebounded 25-3 in the first half. Second half, Wildcats stay in command. Saul Smith on the alley. Jules Kamara freaking the oop. Smith, four assists. Kamara, ten points. Last regular season game between Coach Tubby and his son, Gigi of Georgia. You also saw Gigi. Wild finish between West Virginia and Pittsburgh. Kelly Taylor with the steal in the lane all the way. Panthers up 65-64. Pitt with the ball tied at 67. Five seconds left. Jeremy Holmes with the shot. Ricardo Greer puts in the game winner. And Pitt, boy, do they need this. First win since Ralph Willard said he was leaving at the end of the season. They win by two over. Said Coach Mike Montgomery, everything we do, if we're not perfect, seems to be a negative. The row looked tougher to hoe Thursday night as they visited the Washington Huskies, who are a perfect non-no at home, that home being Edmondson Huskies Pavilion, where we go right now. Things were not perfect, however, for Washington. Donald Watts, Todd McCullough overthrows him. Michael Johnson threw the legs of Greg Clark. My bad. Second half, more of the same for the Huskies. Chris Walcott pass. My bad. Dean Luton can't figure it out. Huskies call for time. That didn't work. My bad. Chris Weems picks off the SenQ carry pass. My bad. And Chris Weems goes for the lane. Stanford up 21. And then things got worse for the Huskies. McCulloch loses the handle. Go for it. My bad. Chris Weems takes it the other way. He had 14. Stanford up 65 41. More from the ugly department. Donald Watts. Where's the Keystone Cops music? Michael McDonald, the Doobie Brothers, zips it to Tim Young. Bob Bender's team, 14 turnovers. Crushed. 89-57 is your bet. final score. The 32-point win was Stanford's largest ever in Seattle and snapped the hot Arizona's loss in Corvallis last month. And Terry, much better night this night. 21 points, Arizona up 16-5. to Woo! Late in the first half, Josh Steinthal spotted up for three and nailed it. Did that seven times in the night, 23 points, but Oregon State down a bundle. DeAndre Tanner, nice try to save. It didn't work. Terry winds up with it. The lob to A.J. Bramlett, who had 17, went over 1,000 career points on this night. Arizona up 66-50. And then the Wildcats steal the game. Tanner is stripped by Justin Wessel. Passes to Eugene Edgerson for the high percentage rip. Arizona wins by the final of 
89 to 72. Bramlett, Bramlett also added 14 boards to Notch's 14th double double of the season with 40 seconds left. ASU down three. We're now tied after Mike Batiste's three pointer ties it up at 75. ASU all the way back from a 15 point deficit on Ernie Kent's Ducks. Oregon going for the lead. Five seconds left. Tariq Brown is fouled. Sun Devils can't look. Brown at the line trying to break the tie. His first. No! His own teammates can't watch. Brown's second free throw for the lead. It's good. Oregon up 76 75. Go. Last chance for the Sun Devils. Dubois Bobby Laser. From way downtown, Fruitcake. No That'll wrap it up. The Ducks escape Arizona State with a one point victory. Brown tied his season high. Number 13, Utah at San Jose. Miller and the Utes looking for 16 straight. You know, Rich, if you put an umlaut over the A and Andre, it'd be Andre. Oh. Andre right there, eight first half points. Later in the half, Utes running. Miller to Jeremy Killian. Assaulted by Eric Griffin. Intentional foul called on Griffin. Killian would be all right. Second half, off the air ball miss. Andre! Oh, Andre! Andre, coast to coast. He had 15 points. Spartan coach Phil Johnson said later they defend everywhere. Later in the half, off the medal of miss, Tony Harvey. Watch out there, doctor. Harvey, 17 points, 7 of 8 from the field, 3 of 3 from 3 land. The Utes win at 71-49. The Utes hold an opponent under 50 points for the 11th time this season. Rick Majerus gave a lot of props to Harvey, a reserve who served a nine-game suspension earlier this season for violating team rules. Said Majerus, I told him you only limit yourself. DePaul at Southern Miss. 20 seconds left. DePaul down one. Willie Coleman, long three. How you like me now? He was three of six from three lane. DePaul up two. Southern Miss comes back. Indiana transfer, Neil Reed behind the bat. Trey, how you like me now, Willie? Reed, six of nine from three-point land, 26 points. DePaul down one, 4.4 seconds left. Coleman, oh, I like you, Neil, but again, I ask how you like me now. Straight to the hoop, he had 24 points, 1.2 seconds left. Reed, desperation, how you like? Uh, how you like off the rim? Reed, not enough. Reed was shocked. Coleman was celebrating. DePaul wins it. They did. Oh, you like that, huh? Hey, now. Second half. Girls, Rich, relax. Spartans lead by 11. Patine Cleves. Pretty scoop laying for two. There's a lot of Myers show up to these games, too. Right. Patine Cleves, friendly rim in Ann Arbor. Moore Mateen takes Lewis Bullock down the paint. There is paint there. Cleves not done. The duck under a move on Lewis Bullock, and then the kiss. Well, you just said kiss because of that sign they held oh, up. Cleves finished with 19, and then late second half. Jason Klein to Morris Peterson. Look out below. Spartans win it, coasting 73-58, and clinch at least a share of the Big Ten regular season title. The Spartans can win the title outright.